pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Sabatino. Here. Deuter. Here. Dunn. Absent. Leader. Here. Kolumbsky. Here. Graham. Here. Saludo. Here. York. Here. Levin. Here. Park. Here. Conquist. Here. Kennedy. Here. Milliner. Here. Brennan. Here. 13 present, one absent. 13 present, one absent. Uh, just to make sure everybody understands, the mayor is out of town because he has a family, family issue that he's dealing with this evening. That's why I'm sitting in this seat tonight. Um, third is written communication. Does anyone from the public have written communication? Okay, would you please bring it forward and present it to the clerk? That material will be copied and provided to all the elected officials. On the public forum, uh, public forum is an opportunity for anyone to speak to the city council. Uh, direct your comments to the chair, please. Uh, those comments can be no longer than three minutes because of the time constraints that we have and the meeting that we have in front of us. Uh, don't expect any response from the city council. We are listening and paying attention to what you're saying, but you probably and more than likely will not get a response this evening. You may get a response at a later date from an alderman who has heard your concerns. So, uh, public comment. Okay, uh, Mayor, we have four that have signed in tonight, and I'll start with Deanne Misaki, 156 South Sunnyside. Misaki, I think I mispronounced it. Oh, okay. All right, we'll go on to Rex Irby, 853 South Hillside Avenue. Yeah, good evening. Uh, Rex Derby, as you stated, um, want to give the council, the subcommittee on the waste contract, a big thank you for uh, listening to our comments in uh, subcommittee and going forward with that. So appreciate it. Uh, main reason here that uh, kind of surprised me was the water, the water bill coming up. Uh, we have a circ charge going from twenty to thirty dollar. I'm just going to round off to equal dollar uh, discussion purposes. So we're going from 20 to 30. And the two main reasons that that was discussed or brought up as those were valid reasons to go from 20 to 30 were that we are spending more <coughs> in our capital budgets. That was number two. That was the first whereas in the, in the, the board docs. Second one is uh, the meters, the new meters we're installing. So obviously that's a $10 uh, per two months, five dollar a month increase, and that's forty five percent increase. I think we all know that. So my thought was, well, why do we need more? Why do we need that? So then read the background on it. It's the budget. So we need more uh, twenty five percent balance in our utility fund. My first thought was, well, when the meters get put in, there's going to be a four to eight percent, could even be higher, revenue increase to the city that will come out of the tax or the the people consuming the water. I'm not sure that was accounted for in the CERC charge, but on average, when you look at all the PDFs of all the towns across the country who've put new meters in, their bills go up. So if we increase 45% our CERC, and then the total variable charges increase 8%, some people are gonna be hit with up to a 20% increase depending on how much water they use. So. Uh, it basically takes, from what I've counted, 8% it's going to take two years for water revenue increases to build that fund up. So we will hit that, if I'm right, I may not be, I'm not, I'm not predicting uh, the 8% the exactly, but if it is 8%, it's two years. We will have uh, made up that number to get the 1.5 or 1.6 million in the utility fund. So. I, that would be the addressment. What is the reason the CERC was really increased? And uh, that's my public comments. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Lisa Gernhold Dirks. 
Good evening, I'm Lisa Gerhold Dirks. On behalf of the Elmhurst Cool Cities Coalition, I'd like to thank the City of Elmhurst Public Works staff and committee members for including food scrap collection in the new waste contract, and also for their willingness to listen to the community and the research that they did this year to learn about the benefits and how other communities are implementing this service. Elmhurst will become approximately the 24th or 25th municipality in our region to offer food scrap collection, and that number is growing rapidly now that the necessary infrastructure is coming online. In DuPage, Elmhurst will join Glen Ellen, Wheaton, and Naperville. And we recently learned that Lombard is also looking into adding this service. As many of you are aware, food scraps, food waste, make up a large percentage of our total waste stream can be up to 30% in some areas. There are many benefits of diverting food scraps from landfills, including returning nutrients that are in food back to the earth, improves the soil health, which in turn improves plant health and reduces the need for synthetic fertilizers. Compost amended soil also absorbs more water, reduces runoff, protects watersheds and drinking water. Um, Diverting the food scraps extends the current landfill capacity, and because, foods, because food contains a lot of water, less liquids in landfills equal less hazardous leachate coming out of landfills, which is less expensive to maintain. Diverting food scraps to be composted can save water and money at waste treatment facilities, and there are fewer methane emissions from the composting process versus how organics decompose in landfills. In the list of questions that the Cool Cities Coalition regularly get from the community, the, f the, fir the most common <coughs> about recycling followed by composting. For either of these programs to reach their full potential, there has to be a really strong public education component to support them. Elmhurst Cool Cities is ready to assist in getting the word out about the benefits and specifics of the new program. Lastly, I know the details of the food scrap program are being worked out now, and we encourage the city to do everything that you can to create a program that is accessible to the most residents possible, both financially and physically, with the type of toters that are, are selected. We've learned over the course of the last year that there are many Elmhurst residents interested in having this service, and we like to see it be affordable and user-friendly to everyone that wants to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, John R. Quigley at 300 um, A West Lake Street, Suite 201. Good evening, John R. Quigley, thanks for the R. President and CEO of the Elmhurst Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I'm speaking to you tonight uh, to say happy birthday to us. Uh, this is our centennial year, formed in 1918. The Elmhurst Chamber is 100 years old, and we've got a lot going on this year. On the 26th, we'll hold our 99th awards gala and our 100th birthday bash. We invite all of you to attend and hope you can be there to celebrate with us. It'll start a year worth of celebrations that we'll be doing. Uh, just recently, you might have already gotten yours, uh, we every door direct mailed 19,200 2018 Elmhurst Community d Directories to every residential, business, and post office address in Elmhurst. It's a great publication. Uh, it celebrates our birthday as well as the 100th birthday of York Community High School and the Elmhurst Memorial Day Parade, which we're proud to help run. Uh, in addition, in the center spread uh, of this uh, publication is a special section about our centennial a celebration for everything you might want to know. Part of that celebration includes a quarter million dollar capital campaign. During the first year, we're at 67% of goal, so we think we're gonna make that goal by the end of 2018. It includes the Ralph P. Pachanio Student Intern Endowment Fund at Elmhurst College. The goal is for $150,000. It's already been endowed, and it's at 81% of goal. We have a second century fund goal of $100,000 which includes 50,000 for a Civic Hall of Fame uh, public memorial project. The Hall of Fame portion is at 20% of goal. The Second Century Fund is actually at 73% of goal. Uh, uh, additionally, for the first three months of this year, we're offering Elmhurst businesses that have never been a chamber member the opportunity to be a chamber member for $100 
plus the $25 registration fee. I'd actually like to thank Mayor Morley, who signed up his communication and marketing firm as the first in that campaign. There are also other aldermen who have businesses that have been members of the chamber for quite some time. I thank you for your continued support that way. I also want to thank Mayor Morley uh, for his delivery of our State of the Chamber mayoral address at our January 9 membership breakfast hosted at Community Bank of Elmhurst. If you weren't able to attend, uh, Elmhurst residents in particular will be able to watch that a variety of ways. It'll air uh, on cable TV uh, by Elmhurst, our kind of town. Air dates are not released yet, uh, but then it will be up online at elmhursttv.com and available through the Chamber's website at elmhurstchamber.org. Hope to see you all at our 100th birthday bash on the 26th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, I was going to get back to Deanne, but I don't see her in the chamber, so we'll, okay. that concludes. Uh, that concludes the people who have signed in. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak who didn't have an opportunity to sign in? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to announcements. Uh, is there anyone on the dais who has an announcement? Is there a manager in here? No, not in okay. right now. Okay, no announcements this evening. Uh, next is consent agenda. Uh, I need a, uh, anybody want to remove anything from the consent agenda this evening? Oliver and Bram. 6.3. 6.3. Okay, anyone else? Seeing no other uh, items to be removed, I ask for a motion to uh, approve uh, the consent agenda minus item 6.3. Alderman Honquist, Alderman Toledo seconds. Roll call, please. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. He's absent. Um, Leader. Aye. Polemski. Aye. Graham. Aye. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Onquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. 13 ayes, zero nays, one absent. Uh, that concludes the consent agenda. We'll take item 6.3. Uh, clerk, could you read the title of the report? Um, 2018 through 2023 Refuge and Recycling Contract. And that was from the Public Works and Buildings Committee. Thank you. I need a motion to uh, put this on the floor. Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Deuter. Uh, Alderman Kennedy, any comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I will defer to Alderman Bram, who pulled this item. Okay, Alderman Bram. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> um, I first want to start off in saying that I am happy to see uh, the composting being part of this proposed contract. Um, I also want to thank the city staff for doing the RFP and RFQ. Um, that way we were able to get five different vendors to bid for the refuse and recycling in the city of Elmhurst. Um, over the years, um, I have a referral um, for a smaller toter, and that's also a part of this contract. The 35-gallon toter is being proposed, so that is also a, a great highlight. Um, I think that's a significant benefit to our, especially our seniors in town, um, that I would um, argue would use, uh, a, a, a would be grateful to utilize a smaller toter, not only from a mobility perspective, of, but also on their uh, weekly usage. The reason why I pulled this is um, I do have concerns over uh, what the cost is for the resident um, for the smaller toters being 35, as well as the 65 gallon toter versus the 95 gallon toter. In the past, when we talked about refuse and recycling contracts, um, we, as you all know, we review it every year and we review it from a, the administrative cost. So what's being proposed in this report is what we're being charged by the proposed vendor, which is uh, um, uh, Allied Republic in the proposed report to move forward tonight. The administrative cost, um, I have always been told, and it's always been my understanding, that that was a means for us to level set uh, the cost for the smaller toters versus the larger toters. Over the years, Alderman Kennedy has um, 
uh, stated, and at this point it is at that where the administrative cost is now level set, no matter what total that you have. I wanna say it's two and a half dollars, but don't quote me on that, um, per total. So we've level set the administrative cost to date. So that really raised my concern when I saw what is proposed in this report of the per gallon cost for having a smaller toter is, um, it's twice as much to have a smaller toter versus the larger 95 gallon toter. And to me, that goes totally against what Cool Cities is about, that goes <coughs> totally against about our sustainability policy of really promoting um, less refuse in the landfills. And we heard, you know, residents already speak about it, about the organic waste and using composting. And again, that's a great piece of this um, agreement and proposed contract. But I, I don't have, I don't agree with the fact of charging, um, I wanna say it was uh, 43 cents per gallon for a smaller toter, 35 gallon toter, and 22 cents per gallon for the 95 <coughs> gallon toter. So we're doubling the charge for residents to do what they should be doing and trying to avoid putting things in our landfill by recycling or composting or both. Um, I don't understand that penalty. Um, I don't agree with that penalty. Um, I, uh, over the past meetings that we had, uh, the vendor that is proposed to move forward with tonight, Allied Waste, Allied Slash Republic, has been in at the committee meetings and I did propose and they, they did answer my question of how do these numbers come up? What, how do they arrive at the monthly cost for the first year of 2018-2019 uh, for the 35 gallon of 1505? And they concurred that it was kind of a shot in the dark. Really what it is is knowing on what the cost or at least having a good estimate of what the cost is to service Elmhurst as a whole and then divide up the cost amongst the various size toters. So it's, there's no exact science here. And if there's no exact science, then I, I pose the question, why are our rates for a smaller toter so high? Um, there w hasn't been, at least to date, any answer for that. There has been some speculation that you're stopping at a house anyway, so there's the cost there. And I agree, there is a cost. You're picking up waste no matter what the size of the toter is but it shouldn't cost you twice as much per gallon for a smaller toter when you're doing your piece um, to keep things out of the landfill. The other discussion point that I made um, during our committee meeting, the one, the one committee meeting that we talked after we actually looked at the uh, RFP proposals was looking at other neighboring communities. And I asked previous to that meeting on having a comparison and that wasn't provided. But I did a little bit, very little, only looked at one community on my own, and that was Village of Glen Ellen. Village of Glen Ellen rates are cheaper per month than Elmhurst rates for each of the toters. Their current rates for this year is 1343 per month uh, for the 35, and we're at 1505. And I'm not gonna bore you with all the numbers, but for the 95, we're at 2084, and they're at 1923. So I asked that question as well. How come they're cheaper? It, there was some, and I don't think we know for sure, but there's some speculation that the village themselves reimburses or pays for the toters for the residents. Um, I don't believe that's the case because on their website, they actually have a breakout table that says that <coughs> the toter gets charged each month for 25 cents each month for each of the toters. So, Maybe they do partially reimburse. I tried to follow up with Glen Ellen. I wasn't able to get to them before the meeting. But even if that's the case, we should look at that. And we should not only look at one community, we should be looking at others. So in summary, I think that we're charging way too much per gallon and we're penalizing for people to do the right thing. I think it's, a penalize, it's penalizing the seniors especially who my guess would be that they were, are gonna be a significant um, graphic that is going to gravitate towards the smaller toter. We're going against our own policy. Our sustainable, sustainability policy is supposed to encourage this type of action. It's supposed to encourage the action of not contributing to the landfill. And we're taking some steps by doing composting now this year, but we're taking steps back by encouraging those to keep the larger toters. 
So I don't, I, I don't agree with going against our sustainability pos, uh, policy. Um, uh, another thing that I learned during these discussions was that part of these monthly costs, we actually incorporate the city's costs for some of the dumpsters at the wastewater treatment plant and a couple of the other facilities. <coughs> different argument for a different night, but I want to put that out there as I think we need to discuss that, that that should be part of operating. We shouldn't be billing our residents directly. We should be paying, the residents should be paying for what it takes for them to have their refuse and recycling removed from their residents. Also part of Glen Ellen is they get dollars back for recycling. Elmhurst used to years ago, and when I asked, I was told that, well, recycling really doesn't bring any dollars anymore, so that's why we don't get any monies back. Well, it must, because another community next to us is getting dollars back for the amount of recycling that their residents are sending back to the vendor, to the hauler. Why aren't we doing that? To me, I, I didn't sign this report. I can't sign this report when there's so many things that I think that we need to look at uh, further. Speaking of which, it was made mention about the composting and about, uh, actually I think one of the residents made mention on the composting about it being revisited. Why are we singling out one piece of the puzzle to revisit composting when we should be holding back this report and making sure that everything is correct? And everything's correct is getting the answers to why aren't we getting dollars back for recycling? Why are we being charged more than the neighboring community? Why are residents who choose the 35 gallon paying twi almost twice as much as those who use the 95 gallon um, the per, per gallon rate? All these are unanswered questions. Um, so I, I think it's disingenuous. I don't think it's transparent for us to say we're going to pass this report, but then we're going to come back to amend the report months later. And that's what was discussed in the committee. I don't agree with that. If you're going to pass a report, do it in its entirety and move forward. I don't think that we should be passing a report and then knowingly coming back to the full city council and saying, oh, by the way, we decided to change this piece of it. It's disingenuous, it's not transparent, and I can't support this for those many reasons. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, let's follow up. Oh. Sabatino. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I know that this has been discussed in depth in the committee. Uh, I do want to speak to a couple of points. One, I want to thank the committee and staff for incorporating, um, in including food scrap collection in uh, working forward in um, a, uh, uh, a contract here. I also appreciate the options for smaller toters. I know that a lot of people have requested them. Um, you know, I know that, again, this has been discussed in depth, but as somebody not on the committee, I do like to you know, five question I can ask and find the reasons why. A couple of things that I have learned is that we don't necessarily calculate a fee based on um, a cost per gallon for waste. It, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it, the cost to administer the program, possibility a certain size might uh, tip over and require more staff time to uh, pick up the waste that dumps over. Um, those are things to consider. And additionally, this has come up the last several years, um, but I think it's important for people to know that the, the greatest influence that the city can have on encouraging residents to produce less waste is to provide unlimited recycling, which is something that we do. And I would think that composting, um, provided we can incorporate that, um, would, would encourage that further. So um, those are some of the things I learned, and I also, you know, I, I appreciate we go through the bidding process and we can find the lowest bids. We can't necessarily look at those bids and and say, well, this isn't the bid we're looking for. We we have what what um, companies will respond to, and I appreciate the uh, thorough evaluation of all that the pricing. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Oliver and Brown. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I will just say that in regards to staff time, it doesn't matter in regards to if it's a 35 gallon, 65 or 95 gallon. I'm, I'm not clear on that sentiment. Um, as we all know, last year when we did the administration cost, 
it was broken out of what, what really that cost compromised of, and I mentioned this in committee as well, according to the additional charge, which is on top of what is in this report, the additional administration costs, we have one full-time, not in reality, we don't have someone sitting around waiting for refuse and recycling calls, but we have budgeted from a financial perspective, one full-time staff member to handle refuse and recycling costs. So it doesn't matter if it's a 95, 65, 35. I mean, I've been hearing for years that 35 gallon toters, even though many, many other communities have done it for many a years, probably over a decade now, um, tip over more easily. Well, if we, we believe that then, we believe that now. I'm not sure why we're moving forward with it now. Other communities have had success in it. Um, again, it's an encouraging factor of, of throwing less out. Um, it's also a service that I think a lot of seniors, as I stated, are, are going to appreciate. Um, so I'm not sure in regards to staff time. Staff time is covered in our administration costs um, significantly. Um, I would even argue above and beyond. So it doesn't matter on what the call's about. I don't know if we're gonna get any more calls because a 35 gallon toter might have tipped over. Um, essentially, if it tips over, either the resident or the, the, um, the hauler will, will pick it up. Um, I, I think in regards to the cost, yeah, it might not be exact in regards to per gallon because the hauler has to stop at every resident Again, why are we penalizing for the smaller? There, there wasn't any explanation by the previous comments <laughs> on why it's felt that that's not the exact science. I've had the, the vendor from Allied actually say it's not an exact science um, publicly. Um, so I, I'm not sure on why uh, we feel that we know better when the, our own vendor um, has stated it's not an exact science and we could distribute the cost um, accordingly across the various size toters. Um, I will reiterate, other communities are seeing cheaper rates for every single toter. But why are we needing to charge more? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, just to reiterate a few of the um, comments and discussion points from our committee meeting last week that I think respond to some of the comments that you're hearing tonight. It, it, it was a surprise to me in our discussion that the price for the smaller toter that's just being introduced at the city's request is not a whole lot less than the 65 gallon toter, which is the smallest size currently available. And we did have an opportunity to hear from the vendor about how the, they see um, the pricing and what they see as potential issues with the smaller toter. What their response was is that uh, the smaller toter, which was the most commonly used a number <coughs> of years ago, they've moved away from them. The reasons they've moved away is because they do tip over more often, and they found that it was much more likely that people would try and stuff all of their garbage into it. So it was much more likely that the smaller toters would be filled to a point of overflowing and either tip over or just spill onto the parkway, which in many cases was leaving work for their staff, which I think might have been the reference made earlier in terms of staff time, not city staff, we're not going out and picking up the parkway, but the staff of the hauler. Um, that was one comment and I, I think it's probably um, a bit of a stretch to think just because you have a smaller toter, it means you're generating less waste. I think less waste, I think there are many people who don't fill their 65 gallon toters now, but if they switch to the smaller toter for convenience purposes, it takes up less space, it's easier to maneuver, they're not gonna have any less waste being produced. So the cost to the hauler to come to the house and pick it up and take it away, it's not changing any. Um, so, you know, I, I think of our own house and we often don't fill it up. If we were to switch to a smaller toter, I can guarantee no one's throwing out less stuff. The composting may change that if we start composting our food scraps. So I think some communities as technology improves. We've seen some communities, I don't know if there are any in the region that use it for all of their waste pickup, but they do a pay as you throw. So there's actually a chip on the toters and as they are picked up, they're weighed and the bill is sent, is generated based on the volume that is actually being thrown out. So when we get to an opportunity to have that technology, then it will be very fair and very efficient. You literally pay for everything that you generate. But I think right now, the size of the toter isn't dictating how much you generate. Um, 
couple other points, the comparison to other communities. Um, I think Alderman Bram mentioned that there are a number of things that we put into um, the RFP services that we're expecting the, the vendors to provide. They include the pickup of all of our city facilities. They include the pickup of the public facilities in downtown and Spring Road and Vallette. That's all a component of this contract. When we select this vendor tonight, they're not only picking up all of our garbage, but they're picking up all the garbage at the city buildings. Um, I understand from the pu public works director that that's a common practice. He has seen um, in other communities where he's worked that those same costs are folded into the contract. But then if you look at the comparison to Glen Ellen, you know, uh, I think the vendor actually told us that some of those services that we fold into the contract have a significant impact on the, on the cost. Is that worth revisiting another time? It could be, but right now it's in the contract. That's how they were priced. We had the five vendors respond, and this is the best value of the responses that were opened, the three vendors whose proposals were actually opened. So I think we're getting a good value from this contract. We're seeing a decrease in the cost they're charging us from um, the current contract. Um, and I, I agree with the committee's recommendation that this is the uh, most logical way to move forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Alderman Bram, something new to add, or is it uh, the same? I, I never understand when I get that question. It's in regards to previous comments, and I would like to rebut to those comments, if I may. Um, may I? Um, so a, a comment was made by Alderman Deuter in regards to before <laughs> having uh, what the vendor stated of having a 35-gallon toter previously and having people overstuff it and if them tipping over. Um, all of that is somewhat accurate, but Elmhurst never had a 35-gallon toter. What the vendor was referencing was we had the 32, 33-gallon garbage cans that we supplied on our own accord with lids that weren't attached, which were a lot, of, lot more unstable, which did fall over, that people did overstuff because we didn't have any other option of going to any larger size toter. So that is what the vendor was stating was before we went to toters, Elmhurst had a, a bigger mess across the community because people were using their own personalized garbage cans that would tip over or wouldn't have a lid on it um, or would have a lid on it for the first couple of weeks and then it blows away down the street and you never see it again. So um, that was an issue. And I agree, that was an issue. But it wasn't about a toter system. That was when we, as a community, d uh, provided our own type of uh, trash receptacles, and that was the reason for the issue. People didn't want to do additional stickers, so they overflowed their 32, 33-gallon garbage can, put the lid on top, and, and <clears throat> called it a day. So that was really the issue. It wasn't about the toters being unstable back then because we didn't have them. This is the first time Elmhurst will see a smaller toter under 65 gallon. The mess from before was because of that issues. Everybody trying to maintain their own trash receptacles. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, let's call the roll. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Absent. Leader. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. Bram. No. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. That's 12 ayes, 1 nay, 1 absent. <clears throat> 12 ayes, 1 nay, 1 absent. That report passes. Uh, on the committee reports, uh, the agenda. Clerk, could I ask you to read the uh, recommendation? It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council accept the 2% salary range adjustment and Pont Pontifex report for the continued administration <coughs> for the City's compensation plan as outlined in the adopted compensation policy R-59-2014, signed by Kevin L. York, Chairman, Mark P. Sabatino, Vice Chairman, Tina Park, and Mike Brennan. I need a motion to put this on the floor. Alderman York, Alderman Sabatino, seconds. Alderman York. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so just a couple of really quick comments. I just wanted to clarify that the 2% salary range adjustment is kind of a placeholder. Um, the study was done in May, as of May. Since that point in time, there's been a, a, a bump up of about 2%. Actually, it's a little bit over 2% when comparing to comparable communities in both uh, public safety and um, non-represented um, kind of in our competitive <coughs> area. So this is simply a placeholder. We're just going to take the salary ranges that were identified in the report and add 2% onto them, and that'll be the basis for the evaluation going forward. Um, along with that, too, on, on a cost side is um, the report identified some um, contributions that employees were making to health insurance costs, and ours were identified as what was happening in June, which was 13%, and in fact, they've increased theirs to 15% this year, too. So I did want to um, raise that issue as well, but I'm happy to try and answer any questions. Uh, ask for your support of the report. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up questions? Seeing none. Sabatino. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Absent. Leader. Aye. Polemski. Aye. Graham. Aye. Toledo. Aye. York. Aye. Levin. Aye. Park. Aye. Anquist. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. That report passes. Uh, on to reports and recommendations. Um, I know the mayor's not here, but I am going to make one comment, and that is uh, John Quigley mentioned that this is the 100th anniversary of the chamber. He also quickly mentioned that it's also the museum's 100th anniversary. No, sorry, the parade the Memorial Day Parade, and uh, York High School's uh, 100th anniversary. And I want to make sure everybody's aware of that, so there will be celebrations throughout all of those. So, you know, we'd like to see a big crowd at the uh, parade, and York will be celebrating the 100th at their homecoming this, this year, this next year, <coughs> so. City Manager. Thank you. I know the museum will be documenting all of that. <laughs> so where you were going. Doing something with it. Yes. Um, two, uh, two items. Uh, last week in uh, Alderman Dunn's stead, I attended the ONCC meeting. Um, there was not a lot on the agenda, uh, but a couple of things. They did welcome the new FAA Great Lakes Regional Administrator, Ms. Rebecca McPherson. <coughs> She is taking the place of the retiring uh, or retired uh, <coughs> former administrator. So we got to meet her. And a couple other things that happened, uh, they reviewed the October and November reports for runway use. Um, they talked a little bit about the submittal of the runway rotation plan to the FAA that has not been submitted yet for review, but uh, the CDA is in the process of putting that together. And uh, the comment was that they would be submitting it shortly. Uh, the Ad Hoc Bylaws Committee will be meeting later this month so that they can discuss the runway rotation, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Ad Hoc um, um, Noise um, Committee becoming a permanent committee, uh, which that group essentially uh, reviewed and commented on the uh, runway rotation plan. So um, we are monitoring that and we'll be attending those meetings to see how that's gonna happen. Uh, Mayor Morley had um, sent a letter earlier asking for representation on that committee. We were denied, so we're hoping through this process we, we do get a seat on that. <clears throat> so that was it for um, ONCC. And then I also had the pleasure of attending the opening uh, of the new museum um, exhibit, which is uh, Freedom, A History of Us. And uh, Mr. Olberg has asked me to talk a few points uh, about this tonight. Uh, so this is a uh, traveling show, limited engagement, created by the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History and explores our evolving concept of freedom and its pursuit from the Revolutionary War to civil rights struggles of the 1960s. A couple of highlights include reproductions of a rare 1776 printing of the Declaration of Independence, uh, letters by abolitionist and former slave Frederick Douglass, female suffrage pioneer Susan B. Anthony, and civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And interestingly, uh, the display augmented, is augmented with materials related to Elmhurst individuals and events linked to the uh, exhibit's themes. Uh, I always appreciate how the museum staff ties in part of the collection uh, from Elmhurst to uh, these traveling exhibits. 
Uh, we will have some supporting programs with this. January 18th at 6.30, there will be a book discussion at the Museum of Lincoln in the Bardo. Sunday, February 11th, 2 p.m., the dramatic portrayal at the museum featuring Abraham and Mary Lincoln. Saturday, February 24th, a screening of the movie Glory at the Elmer's Public Library. March 4th, an in-depth look at Civil War letters in the museum's collection with former curator Nancy Wilson. She's coming back to, uh, to do some volunteer work for us. And then finally, uh, Thursday, March 8th, we'll be coordinating a bus tour to the DeSable Museum of African American History. Uh, so it's a very interesting exhibit. I'd recommend everybody uh, get to the museum uh, as soon as you can. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? <coughs> Alderman Bryan. Um, reports, correct? Reports and recommendations. Okay. Um, just uh, one question on uh, City Manager Grabowski's update on O'Hare and then a, a couple requests in regards to a status update. Um, in regards to O'Hare, um, I was wondering, uh, it's my understanding at least, uh, have they discussed the construction alternatives um, when the 422 runways are under construction on where that additional traffic will be going? I know that's been an outstanding question by myself and other residents, um, but have they discussed that at the latest meeting? Um, not, th I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, not while I was there. I did have to leave the meeting early uh, to get to another appointment, but uh, I did not hear any update, and I don't believe, from what I from what I understand, that they have that put together yet. Okay. And then just, if if you have it, otherwise we can revisit it another time. I was just wondering two things um, in regards to the EpiPen. If we have a status update on where that is, um, uh, having our police officers carry an EpiPen. And then the second, there's been some communication over social media today in regards to the Performing Arts Center. Um, what is the city's role of the Performing Arts Center? Have we contributed financially? And uh, where is that at from a city perspective, not from the grassroots perspective? Regarding EpiPens, um, the, uh, the police department has completed training on EpiPens uh, per the state law. Uh, but recall that that is an issue with some of, with any of the doctors we've approached on that. Uh, so while we have completed the training, I wanted the police department to be as ready as possible if a state law change happens. Uh, they, so they've done that training. Uh, we are uh, in communication with our state senator to see when that uh, law change may happen. Uh, hopefully it'll be in the next session. Regarding the uh, Elmer Center for the Performing Arts, the city did split the cost of the study uh, that they did, an economic study to see if uh, the theater is warranted uh, or what size uh, would, would be uh, feasible. And uh, that study was just completed and given to the city this week. Uh, we are going to post it on the website as soon as possible. And I believe there's going to be a public um, conversation about that with the consultant for the uh, Performing Arts Center and uh, uh, I'm in contact with uh, Mr. Budgel about that as to where, when, how, and all that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports or recommendations? Any other business? Seeing none, I need a motion to adjourn. Alderman York, Alderman Sabatino. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.